Okay, but if I'm not being silenced, then why can't I say the N-word? Why do you want to say the N-word? So I only have freedom of speech Gosh. when it conforms to your liberal ideology? God damn it, Jackson. Um, that sounds a little bit like being silenced she's stonewalling me all over america today white parents are having to sit their children down and explain that there's certain words they just can't say because of the color of their skin dr martin luther king jr would be turning in his grave would he I mean, he's definitely turning in his grave, but not for the reasons you think. Jackie, can I bring this back on topic? And I hate. See, I can't believe how this video is boring to me. Like this video is enraging. This is yeah. straw man after straw man after straw man after straw man. Oh yes, the problem with free speech right now in America is because white people are just so sad that they can't go on the roofs of their houses and shout the fucking n-word like that's really the pressing issue that everyone's so concerned about oh why can't we all get an n-word pass yeah it's also it's completely backwards remember on the tuesday stream when we were talking to charlotte it's pretty mm -hmm. obvious her mom already has the n-word pass and it's like charlotte that's going mom you can't say that <laughs> shut up what are you doing mom don't say that in public right it's there not the go. parents sitting the kids down going you can't say this shit it's the kids trying to shut the parents up right right she's like i don't have a youtube account i don't have a fucking twitter account i don't care yeah it's completely inverted anyway who cares that's stupid share the good news of the gospel that's not the topic i have prayed on this and honestly, the Holy Spirit has filled me with so much... Do you, do you think Christians, too, conservative Christians, want to go around using the N-word? It's just it's no. so weird. No. No, it it's so weird. The, the Christians are generally about, you know, civility between people. Like, even, even the ones that are against the gays, that are against gay people, they still are, like, nice about it which makes it even a little more unnerving, but. Passion for young people struggling with same-sex temptation. You know, when I look out at all these angry people at the pride parade, doing all this sexual acting out and wearing provocative clothing in a desperate bid for attention, I see the broken childhoods and I see the craving for acceptance and belonging and I feel for them. I really do. Wow, you're such a good- Okay, I need to I need to address what you said, Adam. Because mm -hmm. I think it's very wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you could say the same thing like 40 years ago, okay? When people were like really anti-gay, you know, it could be like, oh, all these fucking horrible Christians are out here telling the gays that they're going to burn in hell and doing all this stuff. And the gay people, they're just so nice. They're just, you know, they just want to be, you know, accepted by society. They want to live their own life, you know, and not have bigotry towards them. The people, there's some truth here. And this is the problem with what Contra's kind of putting on forward. And this is why I wish this was like old Contra where she was actually nuanced and intelligent is that the side that generally uses civility is the side that that's losing not in power, <laughs> right? Is the side that's losing is the side that's not. That's a power. great. That is a great point. Yeah. Right. And so, like the second one side gains the influence, all the civility goes out the window because then they realize, oh, I can just start strong arming people into you know following yeah. me. So when they had the power, they were like, we're going to pass Prop Eight in California and just make gay marriage illegal. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Or Which, they were going to. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So they are, it's the civility really is, is just because of the political dynamic at this point. Yeah. Well, see, and that's what's so dangerous th that when like the, when you hear the far leftists complain about civility politics, um, that's why that's such a dangerous idea to, to complain about that because civility is the weapon of the side that's losing the marginalized 
Yeah. yeah the, well, the somewhat, mar- you know, the culturally marginalized, the politically marginalized, and you want that to be the weapon. Okay. Cause you, cause if you take away civility, then. The oh yeah. Violence. Yeah. Violence and terrorism. Yeah. So. So you want civility to really be the only viable path to political success. Yes. Yeah. Well, you want, you want one side to have to be, you want one side to be able to use civility as a weapon to force the other side to playing by the rules, essentially. Right. Yeah. Because that's what civility is. Civility is a, basically a respect for our institutions. You know, what you people really love is the aesthetic of being compassionate. But all you're really doing is calling into question the worthiness of other people's lives. Yeah. It's kind of fun. Again, the irony here, because again, obviously the leftists are kind of obsessed with the aesthetic of being marginalized. Of course. It's their whole identity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Virginia, why can't you just live and let live, you know? Whatever happened to love your neighbor? Jackie, anyone who knows me will tell you that I'm the most compassionate person that they know. But love your neighbor doesn't mean anything goes. And it certainly doesn't mean that we all just bow down to the intimidation tactics of the secular ruling elite. It doesn't mean that we can't ask questions about this narrative we're all being force-fed that God and scripture have no place in American life anymore, that we're all supposed to submit to the takeover of these Marxist plutocrats imposing their queer ideology, which says that if your child comes home from school and announces she's a different gender this week, then you have no choice but to surrender her to the surgeon's knife, slicing up tiny little children's bodies. That's where this is headed. Yeah, you're right. Only Christians care about their kids being wrongly yeah. diagnosed with gender dysphoria. Uh, <laughs> like secular atheists, they right. don't care. Well, in this video, it's actually, it's funny because all the people love this, this video. They're all, yes, queen in this video. This video, if this was watched by right-wing audiences, yeah, would do incredible damage, incredible damage to the left-wing argument. Because if Contra and people on the left want to make it and they want to posit the idea that the only people that have these concerns about uh, you know, kids uh, transitioning that don't need to transition. If they want to post that as that that's only the Christian conservatives that are making that argument, then guess what? You're going to make people more Christian conservatives, you idiot. Oh, like, that's this, true. It, it's a complete, yeah. like this ploy, this straw man that Contra is creating will 100% backfire and blow up in her face and just make more of the people that she doesn't want to exist. Right. Yeah. It's I just I'm not going to be a Christian conservative though. You can I'm safe. I understand that, but <laughs> like it's just I don't it's so weird to me. How is it that it's so fucking obvious? It's so fucking obvious how people will react to this stuff. And we see people reacting to this stuff constantly. Like all this, you know, the the sort of resurgence of white nationalism literally happened because oh we're gonna start using racial identity politics to shit on white people and surprise surprise you have a resurgence of white nationalism you know in response to that and it's like it's the same gonna be exactly the same thing with the trans stuff and it's just how many times can stupid idiots walk into like step on the rake and smash themselves in the face again and again and again until they stop stepping on the fucking rake i just this this is just weird to me because I just, it doesn't touch reality as far as I can tell. Robert Putnam has a bunch of studies on how the anti-gay stuff in the, in the evangelical movement back in the eighties just emptied the pews out, man. Young people were not wanting to hear it. Young people didn't like the, you know, obviously, you know, as, as homosexuality, gained more and more acceptance, people came out of the closet and everybody knew someone who was gay. And they didn't want to show up in church and see people beating up on friends and family. So right. that just completely destroyed the evangelical movement. But this is this is why this just seems like so out of touch with reality. Like who is this this character now? 
I mean, it seems like the it seems like the church. I just unless you're talking about the Westboro Baptist Church, most churches are just not virulently anti-gay anymore. Well, they avoid see, the topic because they want to keep but, the, the mega churches full of people. This is part of the danger. Another part of the danger here is that that effect that you're talking about, where the churches were losing too many people yeah. because of the anti-gay rhetoric. It's because, as you said, they would have a gay friend or family member, and they would say, hey, this friend or family member is just a person like me. Right. Who has, you know, most of this, he has all or most of the same values that I have. They're just gay. And so it seems really fucked up to me that I'm going to some church where they're telling me this person's going to burn in hell forever. Yeah. But that was the process. It was because you looked at this person and you said, this person is part of my in-group. This person is the same as me. And that's why it's so dangerous to have this new, we have to trigger the conservatives. We have to destroy everything that's normative mindset because then that will not happen. People will not look at, at people and say, hey, this person who's doing the drag queen story hour for kids is the same as me. They'll never have that. Thought right. Process. You're Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly right. They're creating a stereotype of gay people that gay people will aspire to be and normies will not understand or relate yeah, to. Yes, exactly. She's create. Yeah. Like a lot of this stuff creates negative LGBT stereotypes for individuals. Yeah. And it's just, that's what that drag queen that you're talking about is trying to point out. They're like, listen, <laughs> like, you know, if adults want to do adult stuff, you know, with adults, that's fine. But I just, you know, <laughs> keep it away from the kids. Like, <laughs> why is this so difficult? 